they just don't get it. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they just don't get it. The woke media, they just can't seem to understand why you won't accept them. Earlier this week, we talked about Jamel Hill, the empress of equality, the woman with a face for Halloween. Our friend Jamelly, along with the virgin vegan Rex Chapman, who kind of, in a way, resembles an anorexic version of Bald Bull from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. You guys remember that game, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out? That game was a classic. But anyway, Jamelly and Rexy, they were part of an all-star lineup premiering Tuesday on CNN+, Plus, the new streaming service from CNN. I feel like streaming services are kind of starting to jump the shark a little bit. They're kind of getting like dating apps. There is a such thing as too much of a good thing. When you oversaturate the market, you give people too many choices, it causes people to become overwhelmed. And what ends up happening, the choice becomes so stressful, people just don't make it. They stick with what they've got. We're starting to see major sports leagues offer exclusive games to streaming services. Thursday Night Football, now exclusive to Amazon Prime. Major League Baseball, offering games to Apple TV. Huge, huge mistake, especially for baseball. The NFL moving to Amazon, it's dumb, but people will bend over backwards to watch the NFL. If my Saints are playing on Thursday night football, I'm going to pay for Amazon, even if it's just for one game. But the majority of the country can do without Major League Baseball. We are not going to be inconvenienced to seek out a baseball game. Not to mention the fact Major League Baseball has the oldest audience of any professional sport. What do most older people struggle with? Technology. It is another example of baseball being completely out of touch with their audience. Then they wonder why they're irrelevant. No one gives a shit about Major League Baseball, at least when you compare it to their popularity in the late 90s. Chris Russo actually broke this down brilliantly the other day. Listen to what he said about Major League Baseball screwing over their fans by moving games to Apple TV. And of course, baseball is going to give Apple TV some. So they're going to give him as bit a good. I know they gave him the Dodger game the following Friday night because that's Jackie Robinson Day, and I know the Dodgers are going to be an Apple that night against Cincinnati. That I do know on the fifteenth. So I mean, the Dodgers for crying out loud! If you, if you're a huge Dodger fan, think if Larry King was still with us. You think Larry King's on Apple TV? Or he did? And that's a, and he was at Jackie's first game. Crying out loud. All for a buck. The fan gets screwed all the time. It's amazing. Uh, here is Jay in Rhode Island. If you're going to start a streaming service, the most important aspect, you have to provide value. What differentiates you from Hulu or Netflix or ESPN Plus? Are you providing content that viewers can't find anywhere else? It's no different than if you're starting a YouTube channel. There are thousands of YouTube channels that cover sports. What makes you different? If you're talking stats and analytics, you're no different than anyone else. I can hear that bullshit from Mina Kimes on ESPN. Executives at CNN, they were the only people in the country that thought they were giving people value with CNN+. Plus. This is going to be a huge success. Americans just love them some Rex Chapman. Rex Chapman is universally hated in Kentucky, and he was fucking born there. That's okay. We have Jamel Hill. There are three people in Chicago who hang on her every word. Jamel Hill. Oh, my God. Jamel Hill can't draw a fucking audience on free platforms. The other day, I showed you guys a glimpse of her YouTube channel. Jamel Hill is unbothered. It should be called, Jamel Hill is untouched by any heterosexual male. This is someone with a national platform, someone who has major media companies promoting her bullshit. The same woman who tried to extort $100 million out of Spotify in the interest of equity. They're paying Joe Rogan. They should pay me because I am completely useless. And Jamel Hill draws hundreds of viewers per YouTube video. As predicted, 
by anyone with a functioning brain, CNN's new streaming service is falling flat on its ass. I don't know... I don't know if I would put this failure in the same classification as Bamani Jones, but it's pretty damn close. CNN Plus went live 48 hours ago. The number of subscribers, it hasn't been made public. But if I had to guess, they gained between maybe 500 and 1,000 subscribers. They spent $120 million, $120 million on this garbage. We are two days into this failure they're already talking about merging CNN Plus with Discovery Plus. People hired for this streaming service, they're already prepping themselves to be laid off. In a way, I do feel bad for those innocent people, the people behind the scenes who were given the impossible task of turning this dog shit that they were given into something that people would pay to watch. Now, on the flip side, you knew what you were getting into when you agreed to work at CNN. This network fails at everything. CNN can't draw ratings during the middle of a war. This is the same network whose former CEO was spanking off to Leah Thomas during a conference call. Ooh, look at that breaststroke. I wonder if those boobs are real. Leah really gets me going when she grows facial hair. I have a better idea, though. Don't lay off the people behind the scenes. If you want to give CNN Plus a chance, get rid of Jamel Hill and Rex Chapman, two people who don't have the ability to draw fat people to a free buffet, two people who have perfected the art of failure. At least Rex Chapman had a moderately successful basketball career, but what about Jamel Hill? Has she ever succeeded at anything can anyone tell me one time Jamel Hill has been involved with something that was successful? Sports Center failed. Vice Show with some unknown social justice warrior failed. Podcast on Spotify failed. YouTube failed. Yet, somehow, she continues to be given opportunities in the mainstream media when Jamel Hill is the furthest thing from mainstream. CNN looked at her Twitter engagements, saw she had 1.4 million followers, and thought, she will draw an audience. Look at all the virgins who follow her on Twitter. The problem with that thinking, most social justice warriors on Twitter are broke. They don't have any fucking money. They damn sure don't have $60 every year to give you to watch Jamel Hill. They had to save that money for when the next version of Final Fantasy is released or the next Pokemon action figure comes out. Is that even still a thing, Pokemon? I know it was real popular at one point. I'm not sure if it is anymore. I don't keep up with what's popular among the nerds. I'm a grown man. I don't have time to play video games or play with fucking Pokemon toys. And if you're grown and you do... You need to reevaluate your life. As bad as Jamelli and Rexy flopped on CNN, they can't hold a candle to the real huge embarrassing failure. No, he will never be dethroned. He cherishes that crown like a social justice warrior cherishes their YouPorn account. You know who I'm talking about. You know who it is. The one, the only, the man whose face screams, I'm a fucking loser, Bamani Jones. I briefly made mention of this the other day. The third episode of Garbage Time, or whatever the fuck his show is called, with Bamani Jones aired Sunday night. He was once again given a strong lead-in from John Oliver. I don't often agree with John Oliver politically, but at least he's entertaining. I don't have to agree with you to find you to be entertaining. John Oliver puts on a great show every week. Can't say the same thing about Bamani Jones. Now, to be honest with you, I don't know if his show's good, entertaining, or not. I've never seen one second of it. Judging by the ratings, neither has anyone else. Last week, episode two, Bamani Jones failed to make the ratings chart. Now, according to OutKick, only 44,000 losers bothered to watch. Episode three on Sunday, same result. Bamani Jones was once again beaten by Mr. Clean infomercials, documentaries on roach sex, and damn near anything else on television Sunday night. But don't worry. Don't worry. Bamani Jones is a smart man. He's figured out the problem. 
He's figured out who's responsible for no one giving a shit about him. White people. <laughs> like, I just don't know why people try to make this far more complex than it is. What's the problem? White people. Ah, yes. Those damn white people. It's our fault, Bamani Jones. Us white people, we damn sure don't give a shit about you. Funny thing about us white people, we don't take kindly to pampered losers calling us racist all the time. When you alienate over 70% of the country on a regular basis, you can't expect them to come out and support you. Like Jamel Hill, every opportunity that he has been given Bamani Jones has failed. At least Jamel Hill has some activity on her Twitter account. Bamani Jones tweets, no one pays attention. This dude, <laughs> this dude is a fucking loser. I hate to kick someone who identifies as a man while he's down, but I'll be honest with you. I take joy and kicking the shit out of Imani Jones' failed media career. It really does give me pleasure. But let me know what you think. Jamel Hill, Rex Chapman, Bamani Jones all fail in the same week. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.